is Candy over Candy at Hainsworth Designs, and I am in the official classroom for the Soda Show Workshops. Thanks for joining in on Candy is Seat, the new online show with the best sewing, embroidery, and tutorials combined all in one. Today, this is the sewing part of it. It is going to be a personalized washcloth, okay? So we're going to actually make this washcloth a custom-made washcloth to go along with the embroidery project that we'll be doing next. And here's what you're going to need. You're going to need your towel a pair of scissors, the opposing fabric, which is going to be this uh, calico giraffe print, uh, some kind of temporary adhesive basin spray, and your pins, plus your sewing machine and your embroidery machine. Let's get started. You may also want to grab a ruler and a marking tool. Okay, so first you want, want to uh, set your uh, printed fabric aside, and then you are going to just open your hand towel. Now this towel measures uh, 16 by 26, okay, and this towel was purchased from Walmart. Um, and then you want to, once you open it, it should look like this, you know, the whole towel. You want to go to the areas where it has those little uh, uh, embossment at the bottom of it and just cut that off so that's what we're going to do first and then you're going to be left with just the cherry cloth part of the um the towel and because this is going to be a little kid's towel um a hand cloth a washcloth that is it doesn't need to be that big so you can get actually what four towels out of this washcloths if you um you know want to make it small for little kids hands so what i'm going to do is I'm just going to just kind of mark it out so I just have a starting line and I'm just going to cut it out like so and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to use this square as a template to cut out for the uh, the giraffe print as well And this is a great beginner's project, by the way. Okay, so that's what we're starting with, okay? And this is, uh, you know, small enough for a three-year-old's hands or something like that. You know, just learning how to uh, wash themselves properly. So basically, this is going to be the template for the back of this fabric, okay? And so I'm just going to eyeball it pretty much and just lay it out and place it on top and cut it out. Because remember, this is also an embroidery project as well, so we're going to be adding personalization. But now, so far, we have the back and we have the front, okay? Uh, you know I am a person that can't stand little wrinkles, so I would recommend that you take this to the ironing board and just give it a good press so you don't have any wrinkles. Um, if you have wrinkles in your uh, terry cloth, you just want to kind of give it a light steam press as well. You don't want to do uh, disrupt the, uh, the pile, okay? So after you do that, meet me at your embroidery machine. Okay, so before we go to the embroidery machine, I just wanted to actually mention a few things. Okay, so I recommend you use a tear away stabilizer uh, because the towel is thick and you just want to just give it some stability. Uh, the embroidery will be fine, but you want to just use a tear away stabilizer opposed to, let's say, a cutaway. And I also recommend using a water salve so your embroidery stitches do not sink into this high, uh, high piled fabric. And so so what you're going to do is just take your uh, spray and you're just going to uh, just spray it some and then place your uh, your fabric in this case the towel and just kind of you know smooth it out nice and even you want to open your hoop up nice and wide and keep in mind I'm using a 4x4 four four hoop and that is because again this is a small towel I'll give you the final measurements matter of fact I have a ruler right here I'll tell you now it is what measures 11 inches by uh, seven and a half and it's going to be cut down small because remember this is also a sewing project so we have to uh, sew it together with the giraffe fabric so now I'm opening up my hoop 
okay and I'm also going to uh, place this on the bottom then place this on top and then let's see if it fits oh wait we want to uh, position it <laughs> where we are going to do the embroidery okay and this embroidery is just going to be right here somewhere at the bottom not in the center okay so I just want to kind of position it like so let me just position it a little bit more while you are watching so you get it okay so you see how that's nice and tight that's what you want I'm just going to press that hoop down in there and then I'm going to take a piece of salvi okay and where did my scissors go oh there go my scissors and I'm just going to cut a piece off like so the width of it you see how that's the width of the hoop but I'm going to actually double this Okay, because this fabric, this terry cloth is kind of thick. So, I'm going to double it. I'm going to double it to the area of the height of the lettering. So, I want my lettering to be about, what does that measure? About maybe two inches or inch and a half. That's about an inch and a half. That's, that's large enough. So, I'm going to take the basting spray, spray it in the inside. And spritz it on the uh, fold it together like so. Spray it on the outside and then place. What you could do if you don't want to take the chance in not um, uh, getting in this area, you can just pretty much put a double uh, salvi on the whole thing. Okay, now we're ready to take it to the embroidery machine. Okay, so we are at the embroidery machine, and I just want to direct your attention to two things, or actually three things. Okay, first, look over here, and that's going to tell you the measurements, okay? So I know that this embroidery design is going, well, the personalization is not actually a design. The personalization is going to be uh, 3.11, so roughly maybe three inches wide, and it's going to be almost two inches high. And now this also tells me that I have the correct frame. And so now I want to see, you know, get an idea of how it's going to look in the frame. And so if you direct your attention to an area on your embroidery machine that has a hoop, if you press it, it will show you. Okay, and so uh, this is a good idea for you to see exactly, you know, how your embroidery design or your personalization is going to come out. And then I also recommend you just kind of doing a trace out as well. And your trace out is going to be this icon on your embroidery machine. Okay, and then what's going to happen is just going to show you where it's going to be. And you can kind of gauge if that's the area that you want it. Okay, so after you've taken your uh, embroidery project off of the, um, the machine, you're going to take your other fabric, your coordinating fabric, and you're going to place it right side up, meaning the embroidery part is exposed to you, and right sides down, okay? So what should be facing you right now is the wrong side of the fabric. Then you want to take a couple of pins and place it in the center, and this is going to prevent it from shifting so much. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to be drawing a line. Okay, so you're going to take your ruler. I'm using a ballpoint pen because I want you to see what I'm doing. Okay, and so I'm going to be making an opening for starters because um, this is going to need an area to open. So this is going to be my starting point. So I'm just going to put a line there and then a line here because remember, we're going to have to turn it. So then I'll just put like little L's or backwards L's. Can you see that? All right. And then from that point on, just going to be drawing a line. But I'm not going to draw it all the way to the corner because I want to round this off. Okay. So I'm just going to be putting this line pretty much uh, in the, um, in the, on the sides of the towel. Okay. But I'm avoiding the corners because I'm going to use a mug to um, round the corners off. Use it as a template, that is. So I'm doing this to all four sides. And then I'm going to take my mug and I'm just going to pretty much play connect the dots here. 
so i'm going to take this edge and just connect it to that line like so see that and then do the same on all four sides Okay, so now we're going to be uh, beginning either clipping or pinning it all the way around, except we're going to leave these two areas open. So I'm just going to put two little clips right here just to, come, to remind me that that is the area that I do not want to sew. Okay, so we we'll just switch it right here. All right, and then I'm going to pin it or clip it all the way around. Okay, so now it's clipped all the way around, and now I'm ready to take it to the sewing machine. So I'm just going to grab a pen so you can see what we're doing. So we're starting here. We're sewing a few stitches, stopping right here, pivoting, which is just turning your, uh, your fabric on the machine while the needle is in place and the presser foot is up. And then we're going to sew all the way around, stop here, lift your presser foot up, shift the machine, I'm sorry, shift your fabric and then sew, okay? So here, stop, shift your fabric, sew all the way around, stop right here, shift your fabric, and then sew. Then you're going to have like a little lip sticking out. So I'll meet you at the sewing machine. Okay, so we are at the sewing machine, and today I am using, once again, my brother in Novus 2500D, although I generally will use the uh, the brother JX2517. I just grabbed this one today. It was just uh, more convenient. Okay, so I am going to take the first clip off, okay? And if you're using pins, then take your first pin off, all right? And remember, we're going down, so I'm just going to shift it so I am in that area where we are going to be starting right there and I'm going to uh, place my needle down by put my presser foot down I'm going to put my needle in place okay and then I'm just going to make a couple of stitches let me just put it on a you know a slower speed so you can see it I guess that's not that slow all right and now I'm going to uh, pivot and to do that, we're going to make sure that the needle is down into the fabric. We're going to lift the presser foot up, and we're just going to rotate the fabric, okay? So I'm just going to move this clip because we don't need that clip anymore, okay? We're going to put the presser foot down, and then we're going to be uh, continue sewing all the way around, and we're going to do the same thing at the other end of the opening. Okay, so we are approaching the last corner that I'm turning on. And I'm going to stop and take this clip off. And if that's a pin, you can stop. And then I'm just going to bring my presser foot to where that uh, clip is. I'm going to remove the clip. I'm going to come up a little bit closer because I want to get into that corner right there. And then I'm going to stop just like we did before. Make sure that my needle is in place, lift my presser foot up, rotate the fabric, put my presser foot down, and then, okay, done. All right, so remember those two pins that we put in the center? We want to remove them, okay? You don't want to forget to do that. And then before we turn it uh, right sides out, we're just going to trim all the way around the excess of this fabric you want to make sure that you don't cross your uh, your stitch line all right otherwise you're going to have to sew it again okay so just that trim very very close but you don't want to um cut or um go across your stitch line so i'm going to do that all the way around All right, so it should look like this. So it's nicely trimmed and neat, and then you have that little lip out. Okay, before you turn it right side out, you want to turn on the reverse side, and remember that tear away stabilizer we use? We want to tear it away. Okay, and this comes off very easy. Even though we did use um, some light adhesive spray, it will just come off like so. All right, and then we'll be ready to turn it right sides out. All right, so take your fingers and just part the opening and just kind of turn it starting with the corner. 
all right and just kind of help it along so all right and then you might want to use a pencil once you've gotten the whole thing out or maybe you have long enough fingers that you can reach in there and just make sure all of the corners are out all right but remember we did uh, round the corners so I think uh, you know a pencil eraser or even a chopstick helps along with that all right and so once you got it all the way out so you see you want to kind of get in there and really shape those corners okay so now well let me just get in there a little bit more And now what I would like to do is, you know, just kind of, once you got it all like the, all out, you want to just kind of piece it together. And look, this little lip just kind of goes right in there. So it's nicely shaped. So what I'm going to do now is if you have a tag, here's the time that you want to place your tag in place. If you don't have a tag, you can just kind of ignore this part or skip Okay, so I've placed my tag in and I'm making sure that I'm catching the back fabric too. So now we're going to take it back to the sewing machine and we're going to uh, stitch a top stitch all the way around. Okay, and this is going to uh, really bind both parts together and it's also going to uh, stitch my tag in place and it's also going to close that opening. so I'm going to start away from the tag because I have the clips there and I need to take it off one by one so I'm going to start on the other side you don't ever want to really start on the corners where it's rounded okay and this is about an eighth of an inch so I'm just going to put my presser foot down I'll put my needle in place and let's see that's yep that's a good uh that's a good starting point let me just uh, lift it up some shift it a little bit more all right and I'm just going to make a top stitch all the way around all right so we're coming toward uh, the area where my tag is so I want to make sure that I really get this so I'm just going to carefully remove the clip and if it's a pin you want to carefully remove the pin because you don't want your tag to shift and I'm just going to come over there and I'm just going to back stitch a little bit just to make sure that we really got that tag in there and then ease off my second clip very carefully back stitch and then continue and this was the area that I didn't get because I didn't start there and now the sewing part is done you didn't think that I forgot about this water salvi did you so you know you just want to peel it off and uh, if you're having a hard time uh, with these uh, little parts of it um, I like to actually use a needle or a little seam ripper just to kind of get in there and, and pluck it up. Some people will recommend that you can use um, some steam and uh, you can use it with a, a paper towel. Um, but, you know, I, I've never really had a problem removing it. Or, you know what else you could do? You could just spritz it a little bit with some water. That works. Well... Afterwards, uh, what I would do now, after I get this um, little pieces of, of water salvi off, I am going to take it back to the ironing board and I'm going to press it. Because even though we pressed it before, it is uh, wrinkled after turning it um, right sides out. Okay, so I'm going to take it and I'm just going to press it nice and neat and then we will be all done. You can also cut any loose strings or anything that you have um, just so it will be presentable. And that's all for today for this part of the season.